How does the way we breathe affect our headaches? Well, I'm going to be talking you through the reason why breathing can be related to headaches and what you can do about it. My name is Ellie Lindsay and I'm a massage therapist and I specialize in treating headaches in my clinic and online. And I often find that with my chronic headache sufferers that breathing can be really related to their headaches. So let's talk about what is kind of good breathing and what is not so good breathing. So ideally, when we breathe, so when we take a breath in, we want to be, we want it to be low. So we want to be using our diaphragm. That's, it's a really big muscle and it's precisely what it is made for, is for um, our breath and our expansion of our lungs and then the emptying of our lungs. So ideally, we want to be breathing quite low. We also want to be utilizing the sides of our ribs as well, because there's a lot more movement there than you'd think. So kind of low and full all the way around our bodies. So, you know, the front of our body, the sides and the back. Not so good breathing is when we're quite high in the chest with our breath, because this often just leads to kind of us taking like short, sharp breaths and we're not using our full lung capacity. So what does all this have to do with headaches? Well, a lot of it is posture related because if we're using the uh, top of our chest here, if we're breathing a lot through the, the top of our chest and not utilizing our diaphragm so well, then we have these neck muscles here down the sides of our necks and they're called the scalenes. There's three on each side and they come down from, they actually come from um, the back of the neck here and then they come forward and they attach to the first and second ribs. So they come down the neck and attach to our ribs at the top here. And they're what is called an accessory muscle to breathing. So they shouldn't really have to do much work for us to breathe, the scaly muscles. They're just sort of there to give, you know, a little bit of support to the rib cage. But what happens is if we're constantly breathing quite high up in our chest, then our scalenes have to get really involved with the movement of the ribs and to um, actually allow us to take that breath into the top of our chest. And if you can imagine that, most of us have probably been doing that for years, you know, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, our whole life. Then those muscles that they're, you know, they're not big meaty muscles like the diaphragm is, they get a little bit fed up. And when they get a little bit fed up, they can develop trigger points in them, which are a bit like knots. And they can also get just quite shortened and tight. And when those muscles are sort of shortened and tight and not very happy, then that can actually create this pulling forwards on the neck. So it brings, actually starts to bring our head forwards um, because these muscles here are tight and they're not allowing the head to sit nicely back and sort of fairly in line with our spine. So we're getting on to why this contributes to headaches. So if you imagine that your head is brought quite, rather than kind of being roughly here, our heads are brought quite forward. Well, our eyes are programmed. Our brain will always make sure that we're looking ahead all of the time because we're programmed to look for danger. So no matter what our head position, we'll always have our eyes straight. So our heads might be being pulled forwards, but our eyes are always going to be looking ahead. And you may be able to see that when my sort of head is forward here and then I look up, I'm creating this real restriction here. And it's almost like a crushing of the, this area. So the area between the base of the skull and the top of the neck. And in that area lives these muscles called the suboccipitals. And if they're getting crushed, then that can cause this referred pain into the head. So all the way around the head, usually those sort of headaches. It can also irritate the nerve. So the trigeminal nerve passes through there. Um, so 
it can either be one side or both sides so if you get pain sort of around this jaw area or coming up to your forehead here then the trigeminal nerve could be involved in that and lastly it having problems with these muscles at the base of the skull here can cause the duramata, which is a layer that covers our brains to become restricted as well so if you ever feel like your head's really tight then you're as if your brain's bursting out of your head kind of feeling then that could well be that this area is getting crushed because of our posture and our posture can very well be linked to our breathing because the head's pulled forward by these scaly muscles here so it's a bit of a long story a bit of a this causes this and this causes this but that just shows you that sort of pattern of you probably suspected it yourself anyway if you get headaches but just shows you that pattern of how our breathing can affect our headaches so what can we do about it well the best way that i've found personally to actually change my breathing habits is paying attention to it so just taking literally 10 seconds to think about where i'm breathing so i if i'm just rushing around you know how it is rushing around all day doing things just every now and then thinking about how i'm breathing and breathing in and trying to actually take my breath down as far as possible because it's just it's retraining so for however many years you've trained your body to breathe high and we need to train it to lead to breathe low now and it just it takes time and it takes perseverance but if you can actually check in as many times as you can a day with where your breath is then eventually that that conscious effort will start to become subconscious um, and the other things that you can do are things like meditation, where you'll just sit and focus on your breath, even if you just do that for five minutes every day. Um, or what I really love is yoga nidra, which was um, allows you to lay down, which I always think is lovely, uh, and um, concentrate on your breath. And it also yoga nidra is so good for kind of that reprogramming of our neuro patterns as well and creating change. So the best way that I find to change the way that we breathe is with focused effort. So every now and then checking in about where your breath is, uh, perhaps think about a five minute meditation and I would really encourage you to incorporate some yoga nidra. I have a free one if you'd like that I can send over to you. So if you just type relax into the comments then I'll get that sent over to you.